We have been in the Algarve now for two months and our time is wrapping up here and one of the things that we absolutely love doing at the end of a stay somewhere is to go over kind of the pros and cons of what we've liked and disliked in an area. Now there hasn't been too much to dislike, let's be honest. No. But. <laughs> Which is a good thing. There are some cons that we yeah. need to discuss. Yeah. For sure. And we want to share those with you. Yes. Uh, the other thing that we always do like to point out, we also realize these are our pros and cons. Yeah. So you could totally have a different idea of this area and we get it. <laughs> this is just what we've realized. So we actually first visited the Algarve three years ago and knew at that time that this was a location that we could potentially see ourselves settling down longer term mm -hmm. or just coming in and um, visiting for an yeah. extended period of time. It's been a time. few months, yeah. you know. Yeah. So when we came back and made the plan to come here, we very much had the idea of we wanted to make sure and explore all of the Algarve that interested us. So we first were on the far east end in a town called Cabanas near Tavira. Mm -hmm. And then we put ourselves on the far west end in a town called Lagos, which is where we are now. This just gave us accessibility to be able to really get on the train, yeah. get on a bus and explore it all. Explore both ends because they're both very different from each other. So we wanted to see what one was about and then go check out the other half and we're glad we did. Right. So today what we're going to do first is we, the, the pros and cons we're going to list off to you are really simply pros and cons of the Algarve in general. Okay now the pros of the Algarve are pretty obvious, especially the first one and that's the weather. The weather's fantastic, it's mild year round, doesn't get too hot, doesn't get too cold, kind of stays right in that comfortable area and that's what we love because we're from, we're from an area where it rains all the time, yeah. so when we can get some place where it's just mild and easy, yeah. we're well, loving it. And three, 300 plus days of sunshine a Sunshine a year, a year. yeah. yeah. Hard to beat. We're not gonna complain about that. So that's <laughs> definitely a pro. Um, and you know, the relaxed lifestyle, it's just easy going. Um, I think that's Europe in general, yeah. but we have found down here, people are just slow and relaxed, and, mm -hmm. and we, we really enjoy that as well. The next thing that definitely appeals to us is the amount of beaches that are available here, and they're absolutely gorgeous beaches. Some are just kind of your more basic, typical yeah. beach that you're looking for, and then the others have just the amazing rock formations that the Algarve is known for, uh, just yeah. beautiful. You know, the, the beaches, you know, we're, we're on a budget. We don't like to go out and spend a lot of money. We can go to the beach for the day mm -hmm. for free and just yeah. hang out and it's a fantastic beach, so why not? The other thing that is really in abundance here is the amount of restaurants, bars, cafes, uh, really no lack of them, it doesn't matter. Obviously in some of your larger cities you're going to find a lot more of that, but uh, even in your smaller areas there's there's yeah. just no lack of really... Well, Cabinets was great. Yeah, and that was one of the smallest, small. smallest towns we went to. So we've done a little bit of the restaurants, but what we really enjoy doing is just staying home and cooking our meals at home and the grocery stores down here are fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, that might sound obvious to a lot of people. Well, why wouldn't the grocery stores be great? Well, all the locations we've been so far in our journey, they haven't been. Yeah. So to come to a location like this and find really nice grocery stores where we can get everything we need right. is, is kind of a big deal. It is. I, it is. I get more excited than I probably should be about <laughs> it when I see that we're next to a grocery store that yeah. actually is a really good sized grocery store. We're not having to go out to a butcher if we don't want to or right. to the pro to get our produce at a market or anything like that. We can just kind of one shop done. So definitely a positive. The other thing that I would say uh, in the Algarve in general, uh, we've also traveled to Lisbon and Porto and some of those areas mm -hmm. up in there. They're not as walkable and accessible and oh, people right. with any kind of accessibility issues would have a problem. We haven't really found that in the Algarve. Uh, we have found that in general, you can get around really easily. Yeah. It's quite flat, a lot of sidewalks, not as much cobblestone. There's obviously some cobblestone and stuff, but uh, in general, you're going to get around pretty easily. Yeah, you won't have any problems. Mm -hmm. There's no hills or anything like in Lisbon. Especially right. a Porto. Now, when we first came down here three years ago, one of the things that intrigued us the most was the airport in Faro. We flew from Porto to Faro for $28 and we paid extra for a bag. So that kind of opened our eyes to, to Ryanair or some of these other budget airlines. They're inexpensive and we can go from Faro up into Europe, um, England, Ireland, wherever we might want to go. Uh, we can do that from Faro, so we can stay on either end of the Algarve mm -hmm. and get to an airport. And that was kind of 
That was amazing. That was intriguing to us. It, and we've stayed in places where you don't have an airport very accessible to you. So yeah. for us, that definitely ranks high on the list. One other major plus here is the not only availability, but the quality of the medical care, mm -hmm. dental care, vision. All of those things are any town that we've been in, we have seen places for that. Some of your smaller towns, for instance, Cabanas, mm -hmm. you may go into Tavira to have some of that. But uh, in general, we've had just a great experience of just seeing what is available to us, but then also using uh, what was available to us. Both of us, within a week's time, go figure, <laughs> ended up having a dental issue, and we found a great dental office here in Lagos. Uh, Brian first went and had a tooth fixed, and then I ended up having a problem and had a tooth fixed, and they were both, with a cleaning, we each paid $125. Yeah. And the dentist recognized us. She saw us on YouTube, so she was extra special and nice. Yeah, excellent. extra nice, yeah, which we like from a dentist. <laughs> so the weather being what it is year-round, there are a lot of outside activities you can take part in. There's boating, kayaking, golf, um, you name it, biking. bike riding, yeah. yeah, hiking, anything you can think of, they've got it. And that's something that um, we didn't do a lot of, Mm -hmm. We did some hiking. We did. We wanted to go kayaking. We just never got to. We had yeah. other things going on. Biking. We went biking. So, so there's a lot to do down here. Um, you won't get bored. So the final pro, which probably ranks really high on a lot of people's lists, because I know it does for us, yeah. is cost of living. Now, in Portugal, in general, the cost of living is affordable. But the one thing to note is, is it's affordable for those of us who are coming here because we're retiring and we already have money to live off of. But if you're coming here expecting to find a job and then you're going to be living off of the wages here, which the average minimum wage here is 700 right. euro a month, so not much, that affordability isn't that affordable to those people. Right. So we get that. Yeah, we get that. And, and yeah. you know, so keep that in mind. But in general, for those of us who are looking at Portugal as a place to land because we are retired, it is incredibly affordable. Yes. Okay, the cons. Now this might be a good time to remind you to like and subscribe <laughs> before we get to the cons. But let's get to it. Now, there aren't many, but there are some. And we didn't really have to search them out. They found us. The trains down here aren't very reliable. Um, we got stuck a few times where we had to wait three, four hours before the next train came. Um, a few of those times, we were there when we were supposed to be, but the train decided not to show up. Mm -hmm. There were some other days where there were some planned strikes that we didn't know about, um, so there was no train at all. Right. So that kind of ruined our daily plan. Mm -hmm. Now for us, we don't have anything going on. We'll just go the next day or the day after that. But from what we have understood is even the locals struggle sometimes with the train system. Yeah, just not reliable. Yeah. And one thing to note with the strikes as well, if you are here and you even do hear about a strike, it doesn't just necessarily affect the day of the strike. What we heard from locals is it can affect the day before, the day after, and following. Right. So, which is what we experienced because it ended up being two days in a row there were no trains and it, the strike was just the one day. So. so we had to have fun on the third day. <laughs> there you go. So one of the other forms of transportation down here is the bus systems. And we actually have found that the buses are really nice. Uh, they're fairly reliable. Mm -hmm. The one con with them though is that there's these large gaps sometimes in between the schedule. So we have found in the afternoon there sometimes will be a gap of two, three hours for the next bus. Right. So you have to just be very aware of that. Yeah, just know the schedule. Mm -hmm. Know yeah. the schedule and make your plans. The buses are great though and the local buses run every half hour. Mm -hmm. So the local buses within the cities they're, they're much more reliable, I'd say. The other form of transportation down here would be you're renting a car mm -hmm. as another con that is pretty costly unless it's the winter season. Yeah. And you also have pretty high gas prices, which we get is all over. But <laughs> in general here, the gas is usually typically more. It's around $8 a gallon right, right now. now yeah. mm -hmm. And the other thing that you're going to pay when you're here as well is tolls on the road. So you can kind of skirt around those a bit if you want to go on the rural roads and not the main central right. road. But if you want to get somewhere fast and you're on the main road, you're going to pay the tolls. Now in the winter time, it can get quiet. Mm -hmm. This is a touristy destination, which can go as a pro and a con. But if you're here in the winter time and you want to go out to eat in Cabanas, I know we stayed for a month. We absolutely loved it. But 
a lot of those bars and restaurants are shut down all of December and January. So be aware of that. That can definitely be a con. Yeah. You know, uh, and I, I, Villarreal, I'm sure it's exactly mm -hmm. the same. Some of these smaller areas, um, they're going to be very quiet and you might get bored. Yeah. I know yeah. I probably would. <laughs> So now that we finished our pros and cons for the Algarve in general, we are going to go through the six different locations that we visited while we were here and kind of give you the pros and cons of each of those areas as we've kind of decided where would we come back to if right. we come back. At the very end, we're going to give you our top three out of those locations. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> so right now we're in Lagos and we're loving it. And part of the reason why we love it so much is the train station and the bus station are right here in the middle of town. And it works out great for us because we have taken the local bus a few times. Mm -hmm. And just to walk to the bus station, the first time you just ask the lady where to catch the bus to lose. Mm -hmm. And she tells you right where to go. Right. So that's been very handy. It's been very handy. Yeah. Honestly, from where we're staying, it is maybe five minute walk to yeah. each of them. Right. So probably one of the more convenient places that we've had Absolutely. as far as that goes. Yes. Another really nice thing here in Lagos is the accessibility of the many beaches to choose from. So on the side that we're on, you can walk down and you just kind of have your typical beach, really long walking beach. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, you can walk out and you have beach after beach after beach to choose from, which are more the, you're, you're taking mm -hmm. the stairs down, beautiful rock yeah. formation, smaller beach, yeah, just gorgeous. The other thing here that we enjoy is that we're also, there's a marina in the center here of town. Yeah. Um, a gorgeous promenade that walks the entire way around the marina. So now we talked earlier about the Algarve in general. One of the pros was all the water sports. Well, right here in Lagos is the capital of that. Yeah. They've got everything you could possibly imagine. Uh, I think one of the things they're most known for is probably the kayaking. Mm -hmm and going through the caves and whatnot. They've also got some great golf courses in the area, so if, if that's your thing, um, Lagos might be for Lagos you. Lagos might be for you, absolutely. <laughs> now the cons in Lagos. We kind of knew these ones coming in. One of the biggest downsides I would say for Lagos is that it's on the furthest west end of the train system, so Lagos is the last stop for the train going this direction. So that's, you know, it's gonna take you when you get onto the train, it's an hour and 40 minutes to get to Faro, so the accessibility for those day trips is quite limited. Yeah. The other thing is if you want to go further west, you're hopping on a bus or you're renting a car, you don't have that ability right. to even navigate and get on the train and go see some of like You can, you can do it, it's just not as easy. It's just not as yeah. easy. Yeah, we like the easy. We like it easy. <laughs> okay, now obviously it's gonna get really busy in the summertime and, and we can see that as a con because with that, prices are gonna go up your your accommodations are going to skyrocket mm -hmm. in July and August. Right, absolutely. Yeah, so yeah especially for short-term rental. For short-term mm -hmm. rental, it's going to go way up. So just be aware of that. It's going to get busy. Now, we get it. We're tourists as well. But that might be something that detours you from being a long-term resident right here in La Roche. But if you are coming here and you're looking for a long-term rental, so a year lease, the pricing here in comparison to more of the Algarve is higher. Yeah. So you are looking between a thousand to 1500 euro to get a rental in either Lagos or Luz. So a little bit higher. Okay, one of our day trips from Lagos was to Portima and Ferragudo. Now it was a great day. We walked mm -hmm. about nine miles that day. <laughs> so we didn't get to see the beach in Portima. Which we hear is fantastic, Which we but hear is it great. wouldn't be accessible. Yeah, we didn't want to walk 12 miles. We, <laughs> we only want to walk nine. So, but the nice thing about Portima is the bus stop is right in the middle of town. So if you do want to go, hit that bus stop up and you can take a local bus out to the beach if you wish. Now there's a sardine museum yeah, which right we there as well, <laughs> which we didn't know about. We missed it and a, a viewer pointed that out to us, yeah. so yeah. We so so that. opportunity missed. Don't miss the Sardine Museum. Mm -hmm. Now, Ferragudo, you can take a bus or you can take a ferry from Portima over to Ferragudo. Mm -hmm. We walked, um, but the beach there was amazing. It was really nice. There was a lot of cute bars, mm -hmm. restaurants you can hit up. I would say that for a day trip, it would be something that, that it would be you, fun. You yeah. Do, yeah, the ferry, just so you know, it was six euro to be able to get over there, and we right. believe it was nine euro if you did round trip. The other thing that we really liked in Portima was they have a really nice promenade, uh, mm -hmm. just 
that kind of goes on for the entire length yeah. of the town and a lot of cafes, bars, restaurants and stuff like that. So, so that was really nice as well. So now on to the cons of Portima. So for me, I felt like the train station was a bit too far out of town mm -hmm. for the average person to be able, just comfortable just hopping on the train and going for the day. Yeah, it just it would be an extra expense to get a cab or mm -hmm. whatever. So it was a little bit, and you don't really know where you're at in town when mm -hmm. you get off the train. So you kind of have to navigate. So that was kind of a yeah, and it wasn't yeah. it wasn't horribly far. It was just far enough that the convenience wasn't mm -hmm. there. Correct. Now the other thing about Portima is it's a working town. It's it's mm -hmm. a it's an industrial fishing town. It's a beautiful little city. It just didn't have as much to do. It didn't have that cute uh, kind of old town feel that right. you kind of may look for, but you can also get that by just crossing over the river and going over to Farragut as well. Which does have that. Okay, next up is Alba Feria. Now this one surprised us a little bit. We really enjoyed it. Yeah. We had a great day. More than we thought we would. More than we thought we would. Not, it's not that we didn't think it was gonna be horrible. It was just more than we expected it to be. The beaches were amazing. Um, there's a lot of bars, pubs, r restaurants that fit every budget. We mm -hmm. found a place with two euro beers. <laughs> For a large beer, yeah. And, and a $7 pizza, I think it was. Mm -hmm. so, so anyway, you can find something that will fit your budget. I think there's something for everybody there. There is. Yeah. And there's also two really large beaches that were absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very active place, busy, lots of people, lots to just people watch and a lot to do. Uh, that was probably a really cool appeal to us because being that it was busy in that area, you could also then kind of go off to the other area of Old Town and it was really peaceful and quiet and they still had the restaurants, bars and amazing views. But you could kind of tailor it to what you're looking for, which to me, that's kind of an awesome thing in yeah. a city where you can get a little bit of both sides of it. Yeah, a little bit of both. Plus, being a larger city, there was just a lot more accessibility to businesses and shopping and anything that you might need to do. You wouldn't have to necessarily leave that city to go to another to do it. Yeah, and not only that, but it's, it's centrally located in the Algarve. Mm -hmm. So if you have a car or even if you're on a bus or a train, you can get to either side, east or west, relatively easily, mm -hmm. and about the same distance, 45 minutes each way, an hour each way. So that's something that um, is also appealing to us because we like to explore both sides. Now the cons of Alba Feria. So for me, one of the biggest cons is the fact of the train station is 5.6 kilometers outside of town. And so you're gonna have to get, you can get a city bus, which runs every half an hour, so mm -hmm. that's beneficial, but you are going to have to get off the train, get onto a city bus to get into town, yeah. or do the bus like we did, but that still brings you 1.6 kilometers outside of town. And we walked it, not a big deal. There were taxis sitting yeah. right outside the train or the bus station, uh, and then there were also taxis right in the center of town, so you could always just grab a taxi and go back and forth. But we really prefer that convenience of just walking to the train station yeah, and getting absolutely. on the train. Now the other con for us, may not be for you, but for us, is it is a party scene. Um, I'm sure it can get quite loud at night depending on where you're staying. Mm -hmm. um, there can be a lot of, um, I don't know, kids <laughs> in the summertime. And so that would be something that might deter us from staying throughout the summer months. Now I could see staying there in the off season because I think it's a big enough city where there'll be enough things open and to do yeah. where we could we could possibly could, stay there. That would be a benefit, yeah. honestly, is to yeah. be in an area like that because I do think it would be a lot more open in the off season. Yes. Now the cost to have an apartment in Albuferia year round is ranges around nine to 1200 euro per month. And so kind of in the middle range, I would say. Yeah, and if you want to look some of these prices up yourself, would you use an Idealista? Mm -hmm. We'll put the link below We'll put for the that. link below for that because there's a wide range of what you can get, mm -hmm. especially in some of these bigger towns. Right, because most of the ones we're quoting you are for a one-bedroom. Yes. In the, and we do look in the city center. Okay, then there's Faro. Now, Faro is the capital of the Algarve, so it's a big city. And if you've been following our, our channel at all, you'll know the big cities we tend not to, to enjoy as much. Mm -hmm. That's not to say we didn't enjoy Faro. It's just that we didn't enjoy it as much. It is centrally located in the Algarve. So that is definitely a pro. Mm -hmm. The airport is in Faro, 
which is definitely a pro. The bus station and the train station are really within about a quarter of a mile of each other. So when you do get off of that train and you need to grab a bus, for instance, to get right to the airport, super easy and convenient. So that is really great. And it's not maybe the most central area of the Algarve, but it's the area where you're going to change trains no matter which way you're going. So if you're coming from the east or coming from the west, you are going to get off a train there in Faro and have yes. to hop onto another train. If that train is there waiting for you. Right. <laughs> May not be. <laughs> May not be. So a pro for many would probably be the cost of rentals in the uh, in Faro. Mm -hmm. Cost of rental, the average cost in the city center was around 700 euro for a one bedroom, which is really affordable in comparison to some of the other locations. Yeah, and the other, the, the pro for me uh, was the beach. Mm -hmm. Now, Faro Island um, is just right outside of Faro. The bus will take you right to it and drop you off. Probably one of the best beaches yeah, in the Algarve. Beach. It was a beautiful beach. Yeah. And with that beautiful beach also comes a con because you have to take a bus to get there unless you have a car. That bus is going to cost you $2.25 each way. So that can add up. The other thing about Faro that we probably didn't care for as much is it is the bigger city, yeah. but with that also came, it was just not as clean. Yeah, it wasn't as beautiful. Yeah. It's just the way it is. The next place is Tavira and Cabanas. We absolutely love, this is where we started uh, when we came into the Algarve, and we absolutely love this area, um, mainly because it was just very cute and quaint, and it kind of had that historical feel. Yeah, um, yeah we really enjoyed once that. You, once you get to Tavira, you're kind of getting into the rural east side of the Algarve, which appeals to us mm -hmm. a yeah. lot more. The, the cities, even Lagos, can get pretty busy for us. So being on uh, Tavira and the Cabinus, um, we really enjoyed it. Yeah. One of the other really cool things there is the beaches. Mm -hmm. Absolutely gorgeous beaches in both Cabanas and in Tavira. In Tavira, you're actually going out to Tavira Island. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we love that. They were places where you actually could go spend the day. There was restaurants out there right. and, and bars and stuff. Yeah, you don't just have to go and spend a couple mm -hmm. hours Spend the whole day. Another positive of this area for us was it's probably a little bit less touristy. So you have a little less crowds and, and stuff like that. So that, that we see yeah, as a positive. I just don't see it being as loud, mm -hmm. you know, and busy as, as, and busy as, as the rest, as the west side of the yeah. Algarve. Now for the cons. As beautiful as those beaches are, you've got to take a boat to get to them. Mm -hmm. Now the ferry out of Tavira to Tavira Island is 225. That's round trip. That's round That's trip. That's round trip. And which is not a big expense, but it is something. It also takes about 20 minutes on that boat to get out there. Mm -hmm. So that is something. It's nice just to walk to the beach. And the same thing goes for Cabinus. It's a real quick two minute ferry ride, right. boat ride, but it's also a $1.50 round trip. So it's just those things that's just not quite as easy to get to. Right, and one thing I would add with the Tavira to going out to that island is it's on a schedule, the mm -hmm. boat is on a schedule, right. so it's not like you can just show up there and hop on a boat and go. You may, and in the busy touristy times, mm -hmm. you may wait for the next boat, because the boat we were on right. was full. Was full. Yeah. So so that's that's definitely a con, uh, and like Brian was saying, you know, if you have a family and you're hopping on this boat with two kids and, and two adults and you want to do that a few times a week, it's really going to add up. Right. There was also a private taxi option as well, a boat taxi to get out there. Um, we were looking at some of the pricing, and it looks like you're going to pay a, a good amount to get yeah, out there in comparison. So. That is an option though if you are on vacation and you just want to be able to get out to the island and not have to worry about waiting. Um, another con for this area would also be because these are smaller towns, you are going to see them shutting down a bit more in the mm -hmm. winter time. So that would definitely come in the con list. Okay, Villa Real and Monte Gordo. Now we combine these two because they're close enough to where you can either bike or walk between them. There's a mm -hmm. great trail. Yeah, through a pine forest. It was yeah. beautiful. It was yeah. a lot of fun. It was a fun day yeah. for us. We, yeah, we rented a bike to do that. It was a good day. Mm -hmm. So we really enjoyed that. The beaches are easy to get to. You walk right into them. Um, Monte Gordo uh, was more of a resort town. Mm -hmm. And Villarreal is a lot quieter and, and quaint and cute and historical. Right. And Villarreal has a lot more, it had a lot more shopping and a lot more restaurants and stuff. It was a bigger town inside yeah. than we thought it would be. Yeah. So, yeah, we really enjoyed that. 
One of the things that I think is so appealing to Villarreal is that you can get on the foot ferry and go over to Amante in Spain. Uh, the foot ferry maybe took 15 minutes yeah. to get over. It was a couple dollars. Um, and, and then you get over there and beautiful town. But that was probably one of my favorite things yeah. about that area was having the ability to have so many variations to uh, where you were at. You could go to Monte Gordo and be on yeah. some absolutely amazing beaches. You could hop over to Spain or you could stay in Villarreal and have... Uh, this cute little quaint town that really had everything that you needed. Yeah, and we, we loved it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And being on the far east side of the Algarve, it still is only one hour to get the train to go to Faro if you want to get to the airport, which, you know, really is a is not bad. Yeah. And then you can cross over to El Monte and you can grab a bus and go to Sevilla. Uh, I found kind of varied timetables on that. It looks like it's going to take you a couple hours to get over there. And it was about $23. Yeah. And if you've never been to Sevilla... You should do that. You should get there. <laughs> we did a video on that. You should yeah. check it out. <laughs> now, the cons of Villarreal are going to be your accommodations. They're going to be difficult to find. Mm -hmm. um, especially over the summer months, you probably won't be able to find them. So you're going to have to end up going to Monte Gordo. Right. So in Monte Gordo, the, po the positive, but not really a con, is that because yeah. there's a lot of condos. It definitely has a different feel in Monte Gordo. You don't have that um, more historic buildings and, and everything. You have a lot of condos. So when we were looking, you were going to pay about $600 for a one bedroom in Monte Gordo, which out of all the areas we looked at was probably one of the more affordable locations. Yeah, I'd say so. Now, it is a lot less touristy than the rest of the Algarve. We met a friend here in Lagos that said he didn't really care for it because it was so quiet, even this time of year. Now that can work both ways. That can mm -hmm. be a pro or a con. I think we would put it somewhere in the middle, but more towards the con. Um, it's probably going to shut down a lot in the off season, yeah. which isn't something that we would adapt to very well. So now we're going to give you our top three picks. Now so, they might differ. They might differ a little bit. <laughs> we have different opinions. Um, so number three, we are both the same on that yeah, one. I think Albuferia. Yeah, would... Albuferia, which honestly, I had no clue that that would even come in my top three. No, I, I would agree with that. Um, I would have put into Vera there um, mm -hmm. before we went to Albuferia. No. Um, we love to Vera. But Albuferia, for whatever reason, um, checked yeah. all the boxes. It did. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Now number two. This is where we start to get on different pages a little bit than each other. Um, I'm picking Lagos. My number two would be Villarreal. Okay. Just, just because um, I would be concerned about how slow it gets and quiet it gets in that shoulder season. Mm -hmm. And I'm putting Lagos in that position because of how far it is on one end and I felt a little bit isolated of nowhere else to go other than one direction. And my first place pick is Villa Real. And I picked the Villa Real because you might be on one total end of the side of the Algarve, but you could hop to Spain and you can go to Monte Gordo and you can get to some of those other areas really quickly from there. Okay, and it's pretty obvious what my choice would be, it'd be Lagos. Um, I just feel like there'd be enough to do year round to keep me stimulated and busy. Um, and that would be the only thing. Villa Real is great. Um, it's very intriguing, but but I think Lagos for me would be would be my number one pick. Yeah. Well, at least we're on similar pages. So we hope you enjoyed this video. We hope that you found this helpful. If you have any other input or insights um, because you are down here or you have traveled here, please let us know in the comments. We love to hear that. Uh, another thing is we put out a video just recently on retiring to Portugal, which kind of covers a little bit more about the pros and cons maybe of all of Portugal and some of the really big facts about yeah. about why people see Portugal as an amazing place to come to and retire to. If you like this video, subscribe, hit the like button, thumbs up, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> Cheers. Bye.